Welcome to the Long Island View. I'm Tom Mealy. I am Tommy Moore. And uh, we have a really special uh, special guest here tonight. I did that time, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't? Well, welcome to the Long Island View. I'm Tom Mealy. I'm Tommy Moore. Hey, listen, last week was pretty wild. I want to first say thank you to... Um, Willie. I know what his name is. Okay. Willie Scapitone and our very special guest, Mr. Donnie Mose from Happy Days, who, by the way... I don't know when this is airing on a local cable, but uh, Donnie will be here in the studio on the 5th of July uh, for an edition of Long Island View, so stay tuned for that as well. Uh, anything? You got? You had a busy week this week. Very busy, very busy. While well, you were on vacation. I wasn't on vacation. I went away well, for one day. Well, who had, you know, I had to do the work while you were gone. Okay. But I got to tell you, we, I got to give some credit to Janine. Uh, she did a great job on Saturday with Evan's show. Okay. It was great. Um, and then um, I had a show last night. Oof. Still tired. Really? Yeah. You were singing? Yeah. Did you have laryngitis again? A little bit. Yeah. It was hey, great. Listen, great. I want to, uh, before we get into the show, we've got some great uh, guests with us here tonight, which we're going to introduce in a few minutes. But everybody has been asking us about this book. Now, I don't know if you can get a, a yeah, this, this is the... Um, um, this is our social book, and it's now going to be available on our webpage. And it has just about every story that we've had here at the Madhouse uh, since we began. I, I guess this book is starting from 2013 uh, all the way up to 2015. So uh, keep checking back to the site. As soon as it's available, we'll post it. And I got to tell you, Tommy, there's a lot of people in this book. And a lot of can you can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, there's there's a lot of people that um, we've had the opportunity of putting in here. A lot of people here, <laughs> you know, and uh, and we're really happy about it. But um, in the meantime, I want to let you know that uh, we've got some exciting things coming up, uh, both here in the studio and outside, also outside, and um, we're getting ready to uh, get involved with pay per view. So I need you to uh, watch our uh, our Facebook page for details on that. We're not going to go too much into into detail with it because we're still working out the uh, the final logistics of it. But uh, we've got this uh, huge event um, coming up rather soon, and uh, you need to stay tuned for that. It's going to be a pay per view a, event. A lot of a lot of big events. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. So well, you know, again, a special thanks to Willie Scapitone last week. Uh, for us having the ability to have uh, Donnie Most here, and and it doesn't just end there. Again, stay tuned for the uh, for the news as we post it as soon as we get confirmation. But anyway, let's talk about our guest tonight. Well, this is something uh, near and dear to my heart. I mean, uh, what these two beautiful women have done and what they're doing is is to me uh, just as good as it gets. And talking about being that this is a show about what great people on Long Island do, you couldn't have two better examples right here of, of people trying to do the well, right thing. Well, clarifying what they do and, and what they're trying to combat here right, on Long Island. Right, right. You know, Long Island seems to be being uh, lately a breeding ground it's an epidemic. for drugs <clears throat> and especially heroin. And for some reason, and I don't know why, but Long Island is infested with these people who are bringing this drug here and our young people are, 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 are losing their lives, uh, destroying families. Mm -hmm. You know, drug dealers, they don't care about your family. They don't care about you. Uh, all they care about is making a buck. And then they take that buck and they live the life of, uh, of, of a multimillionaire by selling this stuff. They really don't care about you. And by them doing this, they are not only destroying our children and their the life that they could have 
Um, they're, they're destroying families along with it. You know, I have a neighbor of mine, and, and I'm not ashamed to say because I've talked to her about this show. This kid was brilliant. I West Islip High School, on a roll. He got a full scholarship, full scholarship to one of the big Ivy League schools. Um, his first semester, got involved with drugs, started uh, doing pot, and then eventually went to heroin. And it seems like it is a daily occurrence that I'm either seeing an ambulance at his house mm -hmm. or I'm seeing the police at his house. Needless and, and, to say. And, and, you know, it is horrible, absolutely horrible for the child or even adult. But it's, I actually think it's more horrible for the families and the destruction. It's devastating. Because the it's kid knows where he is. Yeah. The parents don't know where they are. And every night must be just a complete nightmare wondering. When's the, when's the knock going to come on the door? I mean, I, I walked down to my driveway a couple of weeks ago. I went across the street to my neighbors, and we were talking, and we looked down, and we found we saw a needle under his one of yeah. his trees. Yeah. You know, uh, and not not the kid, yeah. but the kid, you know, the neighbor next door. There was a needle right there under the tree. Well, now, what happens if what happens just hypothetically? Let's assume that that person who used that needle had a disease. Now, you know, we've got grandchildren that are that are playing in there. What happens if one of those kids would have picked I'm up that needle? I'm going to give you a perfect example. You know. I used to walk well I will be when my knees better five miles every day I could probably I would say at least ten times I find hyperdermic needles and I've called the police each time because of that fear because it was right by bus stops yeah, and you know you, some, one kid picks it up and goes hey and stabs the other kid the guy had AIDS God only knows you what know, this happen. is this is a but terrible I mean, thing they don't care and I want to thank these two guests here tonight <clears throat> Um, for doing what they're doing and uh, Tommy I'm gonna let you introduce them well they're two wonderful wonderful human beings and two great souls and people that really do the right thing from the heart miss Judy mrs. Judy Ramonde and Lorianne Navarro I could have got that right I, I want to give it a shot no not at all. I just <laughs> it. thank you for being on the show and so how are you Judy oh, great thanks for having us and Lori, really you guys just thank you. are the founders of an organization that helps combat. Talk to us about your organization. What exactly does it do? Lindy Cares is a community coalition. Well, hold on. When you say Lindy Cares, that's Lindenhurst Lindenhurst Community Lindenhurst. Cares right. Coalition, which is locally right around the corner from here. Yes, Lindenhurst. Located right in Lindenhurst. Yes, uh, we were established in 2013. Uh, and the primary goal was to educate parents, um, educate our community on the resources available locally, and um, harm reduction. The primary goal of a coalition is to hopefully help bring the community together in a community-wide approach to combat this very devastating issue. Like both of you were saying, um, it's a very personal story to me. A friend of my daughter's um, at, in ninth grade was just getting out of rehab. She had slept at my house. Um, it was devastating to me. And as a parent, I felt really compelled to do more than just talk to my slept, own children. You mean she slept at your house as she a had, friend we, of your daughter? They had played uh, soccer together in, in And what happened grade. to this young lady? Um, progressively, my daughter started to detach herself from, from this young girl. And by the time, you know, and every year I'd say, you know, how is she doing? And my daughter would say, you know, Ma, she's just not doing so good. So one day I picked Victoria up from school and I said to her, you know, how, how is Sarah? And she said, she just got out of rehab, Mom. So we started this whole conversation and it was kind of scary how it went because my daughter's conversation was more about how she didn't like the bed and the food was horrible and they had her in this facility with kids cutting themselves and she was only doing heroin. And I said, <laughs> come on. I said to her, you know, a couple months, you know, a month ago, she didn't care where she was sleeping. Now she's talking about the comfort of the bed. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, for for a fourteen-year-old kid to be ingesting a chemical that could be lethal, um, and comparing herself to somebody self-destructing in just another way. Well, seems that's what I was saying before about you know the kids know where they're at. Yeah. It's the families that are. I mean, it's it's devis it's got to be deficit the worry the worry the constant worry every night must be just well and I think too when you're talking about young kids they don't know they really don't think it can happen to them the overdose the death they're not and, thinking about how it's affecting their brain or and, their physical and Judy I I, I I noticed lately there's been commercials running about <laughs> where people are afraid to talk about this 
you there's find a social that to stigma. be very true, right? Yeah, there's a so social I mean, stigma attached. You know, can, can I just say something for a minute? Everybody's got a story mm. about people that, you know, this one is in rehab or my, my son is doing this or my daughter's girlfriend is doing that. I want to talk about today what your organization does to help people that are trying to, uh, or, or that that are affected by this. What is, Lori, what does your company do that is so unique that would help somebody who's fighting this thing? I mean, we can talk about people that, that have gone down that road and we can talk about, you know, all of this, but it doesn't tell us how to help. You know, right. I mean, we have a show called Long Island in Crisis here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talk about the stories and I wanna know if somebody's watching this right now and their son or their daughter or niece or nephew or somebody in the family is on heroin, how does your company, um, Lindenhurst, the, the Lind name of it again? Lindenhurst Community Cares Coalition, yeah. Right. Okay, Non -for long yeah. <laughs> Okay, yes. how does that help? Or if somebody needs your help, how do they get it? All right, um, well, we consider ourselves, we're agents of change. So we have a multifaceted action plan, and we are growing and developing uh, different resources for the different people that need us. We have in our community the whole gamut. We have people with young children. They want to make it a better place. We have prevention programs that are going into effect in September, working in collaboration with our entire school district. We meet regularly, monthly with our school superintendent to get the word out. Another uh, great accomplishment we had this year is the middle school, because what we're finding, when we look at statistics, we're finding that the age of first use and the age of first introduction is much younger what than is it? it was, 11. Oh. For 11 seventh and eighth years graders. old? Yes, that's to what- somebody to use heroin? You, they're picking it, up the pot. They're picking it up. They're it's starting with something. Pills, yes. Not necessarily heroin because Maybe it doesn't alcohol. start with that. It could start with a kid who's trying to impress his friends at middle school. He goes into his parents' medicine cabinet and he pulls out some pain meds yeah. the Wait mother had. But we're talking this about 11 years old. Yes. This kid isn't even in, into puberty yet. This how does happens. an 11-year-old kid get involved with drugs like, like what marijuana? What I just said. They go right into their parents' yeah. medicine cabinet. But they got to be told this. Where is that coming Peer from? Pressure. That's, well, okay. You know, that's where we that's why we're trying to get into the schools younger so that the kids can develop the social skills they need for when they get into the middle school atmosphere and somebody's maybe challenging them, they have confidence and self esteem and they know how to choose friends, they know how to say no. But that's just one part of what we do because we also have people in crisis. So regularly we have parent forums where we offer Nar Narcan training. This is another trend that's saving lives. We found uh, last year, I think there was 594 Narcan reversals mm -hmm. in Suffolk County. What does that mean? That means that That's the, the someone Narcan arrived. Narcan reversals, yeah. what is that? Oh, you mean somebody that needed to use the Narcan to re bring them back? They okay. were, yes, they were, they were, it could have been listed as a death. We're very interested in this kind of stuff because, but again, it's just one part of our plan. It's, it's a group of people that we're trying to reach. We offer these trainings for families who maybe their children just get out of rehab and there's a chance that they might pick it up again if the parent is ready and prepared with this kind of training. And it also, is it true now that each police officer or each car is gonna have that? Yes, yeah. It's, it's I, have very, a, um, I have a 15, uh, let's say a 16 year old kid, um, young girl, um, and all of a sudden I start to suspect some sort of drug abuse. I knock on your door, I say, Judy, Lori, help me. What do you do? Well, my, my personal cell phone number is, is on our website, and I get many calls where people say, Judy, um, I need help. And I will pack up my information, and I will go to their house and make phone calls. I'll call some great people that I know are wonderful resources, uh, people like Anthony Rizzuto, um, that can help me. I can call different different facilities uh, that I have contacts in to see if their program fits the person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the one user, issue, not the parent. 
Yeah. The, the, the user, yes. But now, how does the mother, or how do I, as a parent, get my 16-year-old child into that program? What well, I'm there's understanding not a lot of programs. is that Suffolk County and Nassau County, there's a lot of restrictions on this. There's, there's a couple in, in Long Island. Well, the adolescent issue, if they're under 18, right. there's very few programs developed for them. I believe right now, please don't uh, hold me to it, I know outreach is one of them, but I believe St. Charles is another one that has an adolescent pro um, program, and possibly Seafield. There are many programs for the families, too, because we know addiction is a family disease. So there are family, Seafield holds um, family support groups. I think but that's for the family. What I'm mm -hmm. concerned about on this show, and I think the viewers want to hear, is you've just said that Suffolk and Nassau County have very few facilities or help for children that are under the age of 18, but yet, Laurie, you're telling me that they start as early as 11. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 a nine-year span. Well, that's what we're all. We, that's why a, a lot of our stuff is about prevention, alternative activities. We're trying to catch them before they get into the the use phase. So th that's uh, one of the main issues is education. We, we're teaching the parents to realize what they have to look for in order to stop. But why would a parent come to you if they don't suspect any drug abuse? I mean, listen, the last thing a parent wants to say or even think is my son or my daughter is utilizing, you know, drugs. So why would a parent come to you prematurely if that child is not involved? They're going to start coming to us because we just, we just put out a flyer that we're going to be introducing to all the kids entering the middle school. And it talks about, um, do you, when you send your child off to middle school, do you tell them, you, don't forget to wash your hands? You don't. Because you've done that already. You've been doing it over the time. The takeaway that you want to get from this tonight is it's never too early to start talking mm -hmm. about it. That's well, the key. Lori the key, it, 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 you got to talk I'm about I'm starting it. to understand it a little bit better now. See, now I, it's starting goal, to make sense. The goal sense. of a coalition is we swim upstream. We work on prevention. So the earlier you begin the conversation with your child about don't take somebody else's medication, right. um, the better off your child and the safer they'll be. Gotcha. Well, I want to so, ask you another question because I know, I know other people in the same thing in other towns. It sounds like... You, you're, you're very fortunate with your town as far as the school goes because I hear that a lot of schools are not so receptive as far as wanting right. to help. They want to put the blinders That's on. That's right. It's not in my backyard. True. So it sounds like that your school system is, is pretty on it. board. They are stakeholders now, in our coalition. Now, That's my right. next question is, are they doing things as far as assemblies and, oh, yeah. and, and reaching out to the kids. Mm. Well, see, then you're, you're in a good school district. See, I can tell you a couple different things that Lindy cares, what separates us from maybe other coalitions. Mm -hmm. um, we, we try to educate parents about emptying those medi medicine cabinets. We try to I, talk I to them. I, I never understood that, though. Right. Why does it, I'm probably going to make somebody a multi gazillionaire now, why don't they make safes? Why don't they make a box with we a lock it. on we it for it. your medication? We we I mean, it. I don't know but why you would just put your trying, medication right. in, in an open... But, you know, I, it was a surprise to a lot of parents, including myself. We had a Shed the Meds program yes. where we invited everyone to come to our assembly and bring their medication from the medicine cabinet. And that's why I tried well, to put that it must in. Have been some truck load. Well, this is this is what I'm saying. You know, and you would say, why would a why would a child take some medicine out of your med to impress somebody at school? You know, it's a very tough time when the kids or are getting sell it. or sell. Or yeah, you got it. But what we're doing with our coalition is we want to make sure we're like we said we're agents of change. But we want to make sure that when the kids reach out their hand, it's going to be greeted not with a drug deal. I'm that's starting to understand this. This is almost similar to you know years ago there was a big push for don't talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. And we started with our kids, very young, six, seven years old, eight years old. And they drilled it into our head, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers, because there are some bad people out there. So Lindy's, Lindy Cares, what you really do is you're the same type of an organization, but instead of the stranger, you're dealing with the drugs. Yeah. So your organization now, before that even starts, and because drugs are so 
plentiful here on mm -hmm. Long Island, and we know that heroin and other drugs are easy to come by here on Long Island, even prescription medication. Your theory behind this is to now give the parents of today the same thought pattern as don't talk to strangers, teach your kids that drugs is out there, and that's what you guys it's are doing. It's similar to, to the campaign they did for cigarettes. Yes. And, and all, everybody thinks cigarettes are I disgusting. Got also, now. going back to Tom's original question, um, when they do call you, mm -hmm. do you have, I, I'm assuming that you have counselors that can go, do they, do you do that? We have like, a number try of resources to get to the kid available. Right at the get go? We have a number of resources available to people. The goal is to get families involved in their own recovery process. Right. So if I'm going to do it for them, right. I might um, enable them. So the goal is to say this is, these are the resources available. I can be there and I can assist them, but the moms and the dads need to buy in to that well, that's the need the hardest for help part as much as the person. It, no, that's, you, that's know, you see the it all drugs. the time on television, the, the, you know, uh, or Dr. Phil or anything. You know, they're sitting right on live television and they still don't want to admit it. You know, they don't want to believe that this is well, happening it's a to the wrong thing for, for, for anybody no, to admit this. I agree, stuff. but I'm saying that's why I think that there should be a third party involved. You know, that's somebody that they could they could respect is and there relate a, to. Is there a fee for <clears throat> what you do or is this no, is, this is a non-for-profit? Not, not for we, we are a non-for-profit organization. I, was it last year? Mm -hmm. uh, we had a local um, accountant in Lindenhurst donate his time yep. to to help us attain so that this status. Is, this, then this is a, a pretty amazing thing that the two of you have we done. We work relentlessly. I mean, this is really it's amazing. You two come out of the out of the out of the ground, so to speak, and you decide that you know what you're going to make this. Um, your goal, your your passion to educate parents because of the influx in, in drugs on Long Island I think they came at a very as a, at a very early early age. We we had a, a real nice boost in membership, which we're really trying to grow our membership because our zip code has forty thousand residents, and we have a membership now about eighteen hundred. Wow. So we went from in this last month we had one hundred and sixty three new people join because of the different campaigns that we run. so Well, isn't it also true that Suffolk County and Staten Island are the two biggest I problem think it areas? Is, yes. Mm -hmm. why, why is there such, and, and you may know this better than I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm openly, I'm very boisterous when it comes to insurance companies. I think it's a joke. I think they're, they're money-sucking organizations that are connected both politically and, uh, you know, I, I, I have no respect for the insurance companies at all. Why is it so difficult for an insurance company? They see this. They see a 14, 15, 16, 18 year old individual. They see and they know the devastation of how addictive this could be. Why do the insurance companies deny them the medical coverage and to put them into a rehab. Do you know why? No idea. What I do know is that it, they it's do believe that, that there's certain levels. Well, there's money involved, yeah. But I think there's different, you know, have they completed an outpatient program? But that have outpatient they, program is garbage because the outpatient program, there's a very small window, correct me if I'm wrong, to get to that child during that course of treatment. Is there not? Yes. Very small. Mm -hmm. So if you have to follow a certain program first before you can get the help that you truly need, how many people actually follow the program before that help kicks in? Yeah, well, that's why we, we want to gain some strength in our membership so that we can start to have a say in this kind of stuff. I mean, we, we've been watching your other show. You have the Linda Ventura show. and. You know, she makes a, a passionate plea that, you know, if you have diabetes and, and you right. get admitted to the hospital mm -hmm. and then you have a relapse two days later, they don't say, oh, we just had you. Right. And you, you know, it, it, for some reason they treat this disease of addiction because it does become something that a lot of people, they cannot control their, you know, their desires for these drugs. And we feel they should be treated equally. What, as is this, any what does Suffolk County require before the insurance companies will jump in and pay for any kind of rehab or rehabilitation? Do you know? We, we actually, no. We, uh, we would, would turn to professionals for that. I mean, we so. have resources that are professionals that are at our fingertips. 
you know, established organizations all across Long Island. And we also, because we're a coalition, we deal a lot with the OASIS. So we look for facilities that are approved. Mm -hmm. And, and w when we turn to the professionals for that, we, we have our We've got about roles. three minutes left. Judy, tell me how they can get a hold of you. www.lindycares.org. Yes. Um, my cell phone number is 516-815-3337. We are available, whether it's you need treatment, you're a family member that is out of their mind, uh, you know, we can help connect you. Um, there's many 12-step programs available, and, and they're really helpful in the pursuit of recovery, so. Um, Lori, they want to get a hold of you in the middle of the night. Can they call you? Yes, absolutely. Two o'clock in the morning. Anytime. They can call you. Yes, How you're do they always get a hold available. 516-724-0551. Also, the website, www.lindycares.org. There's a join now button, mm -hmm. you join. You can start following us. You can come to any campaign. This is for everyone. This, this affects Facebook. everyone. One, one last question too. Is there a, a safe haven number for the kids themselves to call that might not want their parents involved that you could? That's a real sticky <laughs> place there. Is, I, I, is, my, <laughs> is my phone number available? It is. Will I talk to a child? I will. Yeah, but we, we you know what, we're grown up. Because I would think that that would be a great help. I we would probably parents. connect the child with yeah. another person their age. Right. Um, unless they'd it, be is willing to let me to speak issue? to their mom. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's yes. one of the things we want them to know. It's okay to ask a grown up for help. Well, I'm just saying, but I mean, we you, to make they have suicide hotlines. Why, we have crisis hotlines. Why can't you have a, a uh, heroin hotline? We do. We, it's right on our website. Yeah. There is a hope no, but I mean, I could tell that's that like, you're very leery you know, of that's, speaking that's, to that's, that's Because that's a tough situation. If that that's child is calling them, obviously the child can't talk to the parent. So if that child thinks that they're going to call the parent, why should the child call them? And no, that's why I said, is, is there a safe haven number that they be. know that we, not? We, we, we'll get back to right. part two. We're actually out of time right now, okay. so uh, I want to thank you very much for watching the uh, Long Island View tonight. And uh, we'll be back next week with part two of this crisis that we have going on on Long Island and how it affects both our kids and our family. And if you're watching on Madhouse TV, stay with us. We'll be coming right up with part two. Tom Bealey from Madhouse TV, and when I'm not at the studio, I'm here at the Harrison Law Group. This is my real job. In this January 2015, Brett and I are putting together a show called Legal Straight Talk. It'll be aired on Cablevision as well as here at Madhouse TV. You need to tune in. This information that we're going to be giving the public is the real deal. It's all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. So tune in this January 2015 for a new episode of Legal Straight Talk. I'm Leland Prater, and I'm down here in St. Augustine, Florida, and you're watching MadhouseTV.com.
she comes over to me and she goes, you're never going to be successful unless you follow Jesus. I said, I would follow Jesus, but I can't walk on water. And by successful, you mean mounted to a cross? Because he nailed it. Why aren't any of you laughing? Because we're watching NetLTV.com. Hi, I'm Tom Mealy. Welcome to another edition of the Long Island View, Part 2. And I am Tommy Moore, and we have some beautiful souls here today, angels from heaven. You know, before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody that uh, the social book, uh, Madhouse TV, is, uh, is, is right now on our website, and it's kind of a great book. It's got a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. You know, it has all of the people that we've had the pleasure of meeting over the years, the superstars that have been uh, through these doors and uh, people that have been on the Long Island View as well as the other shows that we broadcast here. And I want to let people know out there, by the way, especially, uh, and this is a special thanks to uh, Cablevision Channel 20, but any of you folks that are broadcasting on Channel 20, you want to uh, have your show broadcast in high quality, high definition. Give us a call down here. We'd be more than happy to do it for you. Uh, we pride ourselves in producing a quality, quality uh, show, both audio and uh, and video. So uh, give us a shout. We'll be more than happy to talk to you. So let's get back to this epidemic here on Long Island. Epi uh, Long Island has got a crisis. Yeah, um, you know, I we were just talking uh, during the break, and, uh, and this is only my personal belief. And, I mean, I really believe that if there's a lot of kids stuck that are that are in in a bad way and don't have a go-to person and and I and I'm hearing that there's like legal reasons that you know they you know you have a suicide hotline they can call at any time and they and no one can say anything I don't understand why our never mind any of these groups cuz certainly I don't put them in that thing but why our government doesn't allow. Oh, well, it would be the government. Why the state or the county would not allow it? Well, yeah. I, I mean, to me, I think it should be countrywide. Yeah, but yeah, well, you know, I, I, I mean, with all these with billions you, with, we with send the to other countries. I'll tell you what the problem. The problem is, is that if you do it, the first thing that, and I'm not saying every family or every parent, but you know, this world that we live in, they're too crazy. So do something to this I, child that's outside the uh, realm I, of uh, norm, I, uh, and that parent will do everything they can in order to sue that individual for their own, and listen, you know, look, you know, during the day I'm involved with the insurance, I see it all the time. People will get on the phone, they'll come in, they'll do something, and they think it's a lottery ticket. No, it's not I, a lottery no, ticket. I, you're dealing with your kids this, here. So if, let me tell you something. If your kids, and you're listening to this show, if your kids are out there and, and, and that child is doing any kind of drugs or anything like that, and I'm telling you the parents, and that child calls an organization like we have on today, and you think that you're going to turn around and you're going to sue them because they talk to your child, you need to wake up. You need to wake up because if they didn't and they didn't step up to the plate because maybe you don't know it. No, this is true. I, I they agree 100% with you. Need to, they need to forget about the lottery ticket and understand what that kid and just did in order to save his life and maybe the future of your family. And aside from that, obviously the right thing isn't happening at home that the kid of can't course. go to the parent. But my beef is not even so much with that. It's more with our government that we send trillions of dollars to other countries we, we we give medical care to illegal people here in this country and we can't even help our own tax paying people i mean that is just outrageous that's outrageous i'm sorry but no that's, I, I i i agree 100, 100 I, I, that should be a nationwide thing that there's a number that a kid can call if they're in trouble and they don't have somebody to get they can trust or go to and talk to a professional 
counselor and, and and walk them through it and maybe save their lives as opposed to the kid just getting deeper and deeper. You know, and we deeper had, uh, as you know, Linda Ventura does a show. Linda Ventura, her son Thomas died in the heroin overdose here in Long Island. She did a national commercial, those of you who know her. She had somebody on the show a couple of weeks ago, and I had an opportunity to sit down with him. You know what he called heroin? Candy? Honey in the veins. That's what he called it, honey in the veins. He said it was so incredibly, incredibly good that he came up with this name, honey in the veins. So if you have a child who's taking any kind of drug, especially heroin, and they see it as honey in the veins, the strength that it probably takes that child to stop and make a phone call has got to be enormous. I don't know how they I do just, it. I just saw an interview, or I don't know whether I saw it or read it, being a rock and roll guy with Keith Richards. Now, here's a guy that's been pretty clean for a long time, making gazillions of dollars, and I love Keith Richards. I love the guy. And uh, one of the interviewers just said, Keith, uh, you know, is there is there anything you miss in life? Is there anything that you don't have in life that you wish you had? And he goes, yeah, heroin. So it must be a really powerful Well, listen, powerful and that's drug. not that's not an invitation to try this stuff. So let's let's No, introduce, he's saying it. Let's that's introduce how powerful our it is. guest um, Tom, you want to have the pleasure again? I certainly would. I'd like to introduce Judy Ramondo and Miss Lori Ann Navarro. Hi guys. Navarro. Hi guys. Let's let's <laughs> Thanks for having us let's back. go back. Uh, you know, last week we talked about um, children making phone calls and I know that's a, a sticky sticky situation and I get kind of upset because I think that if a child at the age of 11 12 and 13 has the I don't know the drive or whatever it is in them to pick up that phone to reach out to somebody like you two for help personally I think the parent should get down on their knees and kiss your feet that mm -hmm. you're there to help that child instead of wondering about how they're going to try to sue you because you talk to my child who's underage. I mean, that's what comes out. <clears throat> well, Am I right? That's do, sad. We do take a community approach. And yeah. The goal is to partner with our school district. So that partnership has grown so immensely and so beautifully that um, they're willing to we have so many beautiful voices and people within our school that are willing to help our children yes and have been for years uh, their buy-in is so much greater today than before we've always done a program in lindenhurst called shattered dreams uh, now we're bringing in speakers we're we're invited in for athletic athletic meetings mm -hmm. uh you know the fall and the spring there's big athletic meetings where all the parents have to come if your children are going to play so the goal is to have speakers come in that can educate the parents and the kids. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. um, I've always been very involved with sports with kids. So I've been around because I've been coaching Little League for 36 years. I coach wrestling. I, my, I have six grandsons. All their friends hang out at my house. I look, I really keep a close eye on everything. And, and, and you know, a lot of times you, you, you can't catch it. You know, it's who they're hanging out with. But, um, what I would want to know, what I want to know from you, is exactly because I know from talking to these kids, and not just these kids, other kids in other towns, and the private schools are probably even worse. Mm -hmm. the, the big uppity schools that the parents pay zillions of dollars to go to. I won't mention any of their names, but uh, I know um, that these kids talk to me. They said you can walk down the hallway, and every five feet, be able to buy any drug that you want. Now, what is your specific school doing to stop that? I mean, I know what you're saying, that they're trying to do it through this, well, this, and this. Besides, but I mean, physically, okay. what are they doing in your school to stop it? There's a couple of things. I think implementing curriculum to educate the kids is, is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing in speakers to speak to the kids, again, another huge thing. One of the, the newest concepts that they're considering is bringing in a satellite drug and alcohol program two days a week so those kids that do have issues can possibly have the necessary people to speak to you, you we were just talking about the concern for not having those people for the kids to go to lindenhurst is trying to find the ways 
that the kids can have the resources available right there. Um, they we, are. We did. We established a, a scholarship, and we asked for essays. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the way we get our information, and this is how we plan our campaigns. So we read the, the essays. We we organize them. We look at all the things that the kids are asking for, and that's how we plan. We're in the process of planning our new activities for the new year now. So that's we're driven by data. We're driven by statistics. That's how we chose our goal to reduce the age of first use, and that's why we implemented the curriculum now in the earlier grades, because that's how we get our information, and that's the only way to know. You know, We're not necessarily going to get a phone call from one particular kid, and, and our goal really is to be community-wide. Mm -hmm. So we, we try, you know, we, we are here to steer people to the correct professionals, the resources that they need, but we're also trying to change the attitude, draw people in earlier, and, and, and you know, we will, we will do a little political stuff, but we're not political. Um, like, for example, recently, they, uh, the pawn shops, there was legislation that came out where um, at this point now, instead of just reporting what they received that day, now they have to upload a picture. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, you know, that's a good. heroin mm -hmm. person, that's, that's how I try to draw in also. We don't just have um, young parents or middle school parents. We also have a, 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 uh, the older, the older generation. We say, look, it affects you too. If, if someone's on heroin, they pass by your garage and they run in there and grab something because they need some quick cash. So, you know, that's how we try to draw in And I think that's where the Neighborhood the Watch comes in. Yes, because yes, you know, we just, we got this I, beautiful I thing. I get all that, and I think it's all wonderful. I really, truly do. And I know exactly where you're going from. But I'm more of a guy that likes to go right to the source. And I really feel, and I do a lot of work with bullying, you know, uh, uh, which is, you know, another same kind of thing, and I'll explain why. Um, and I ask the same question to all these people that I'm involved with this is like, well, in the schools, you know, they're so intimidated. We have a show here called AAU. I hear these kids, they come in here every Thursday and they talk, and they tell me horror stories. I mean, as far as, I mean, even gangs, their initiation is they have to rape a girl. I mean, this is going on right on Long Island. I mean, that's incredible in junior high school. Uh, but my thing is, and I, and, and I say the same question to them, everybody, every student in them schools, those schools, excuse me, um, knows who's dealing in the school. Now, there's an intimidation factor there. They're going to get beat up. They're going to get killed. They're going to get dead if anybody rats. Why, why isn't there a safe place, like, and I would say the same with bullying, that they can't go to a teacher and say, listen, Joe Jones over here, he's dealing heroin, or he's dealing pills, or he's doing that. Because they're still in the schools. I don't care what anybody says. And you can do all you want. Until you cut that off, it's... You, you you know it's like shoveling. You know what? I don't think, think I don't think I don't think a child. It, you know we're we're talking about the mentality of a kid versus the mentality that we have today. We think that way. No, I'm talking and, about changing right? the morality we, of the schools. But, uh, but I don't, well, I, I don't, I don't think know I that can. that could happen. I think what our, co our coalition does is we try to bridge the gap between the school right. between the. Uh, businesses between you know I have people call me and I will call the superintendent and say do you know somebody just posted on Instagram that they're dealing drugs on Smokers Corner right. which is really close to our high school uh, Monday through Friday That's and great. gave the hours That's and great. I was like really so he will set up you know, security yeah. at that area to watch. So that's the goal of a coalition. What about the Suffolk County Police? Do they? Well, the Suffolk yeah. County Police too. Great you support. Know, we we they come to our meetings. Yes. We go to their meetings. We are in close contact with them all the time. Um, the police, you know, yeah, the it's police working definitely. together as a community. That's what I'm talking about. We, you got to get to the source. The kids know who they can the go dealers to. We have are a the number source. of people in our schools that are the contact people that the kids even know to go to. They know right. who to go to. So, you know, how many, uh, just how many uh, uh, children or how many parents have called you in the past year? Hmm. I'd say, you know, we I've had probably 10 personal phone calls as well as people will talk to us on Facebook. People are instant mes message us. We had somebody just recently call that there, there was a hypodermic on their street. So we have medical waste containers, and we will go. Right. Uh, we started, one of the very first campaigns we did was a clean sweep. 
and we got the community out to just clean up the bottles and mm -hmm. the whatever was on the street. The goal is to bring the community together. That's, That's what the coalition you does. About so this. yeah, if somebody calls and says that a, a you know, I, I'll never forget. I was in bed. It was ten o'clock. A woman called me irate that there was a bag of weed on her street, and she was fed up. And I got up and. And I, you know, took my medical waste container and I went and grabbed it and I put it in this container and I went home and my husband said, what'd you bring it here for? <laughs> so I got back out of bed and I <laughs> went to the first precinct <laughs> and I brought my wet medical waste <laughs> container, put it on the counter and I said, uh, I think there's weed in here. Could you, you know, and he just, he just said, leave it with us. Um, well, that's one of our they're, meetings. They're frustrating. Right? People the spirit are frustrated. of community. Tell me yeah. about spirit of community brings together. There's a lot of people in our community doing great things. That's why we think we could help serve as a model and also bring in. There's a lot of other coalitions that are bordering us that we're going to try to work together with them to just to form a line of defense. And as we extend our line of defense, we feel that we're going to be able to push back. So on what you're saying is that you have these other coalitions that are in different townships around yep. Lindenhurst. You have the direct contact to these individuals. So if you got a call from somebody in Patchog or somebody in mm -hmm. East Williston, you would be able to say, okay, these are the people that we you need to contact. We network with people all the way out to Riverhead. Constantly. So we will go See, to their that's meetings. That's the key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The key is to get people educated that you're there. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're that's why I thank you for and, bringing and educated us here. to know that this is a very serious problem here on Long Island. It's a, it's a nationwide epidemic. Yeah. And, and I've had the opportunity to go to different trainings and sit in room in a room with 2,000 other coalition members or leaders mm -hmm. in their community, agents of change, as Lori said, yeah. that all. are doing this work across the country. Well, like Linda Ventura, I mean, she's up in Washington, Kings she's Park. up in Albany, constantly lobbying yes. against. I mean, you need people like that. Yes, I mean, yes, and, and, and what you, you guys are like doing, us. what I love the most is bringing doubt. the, because that's something that has, I mean, from when we guys grew up. Yeah, you know, the communities were always tight. I mean, mm -hmm. I proved it on my show by the Memorial Day Parade. I mean, it was ridiculous. I showed a picture of when I was a kid and now. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like a thousand people compared to 35 people. Right. What happened? You know, the communities aren't there. You don't know who your next door neighbor is anymore. It's time that everybody knows. The and if these people don't. watch is good also. It's wonderful. You know, we but just that's doing it. Eyes watch. on Lindy. Right. But you don't know. you right agree? Neighbors don't know neighbors like they did no. when we were kids. Well, well, everybody knew everybody. We have a, a, a block in Lindenhurst that are, they're really like, the prime neighborhood watch. These people band together That's because nice. of one drug user, dealer, he was robbing from them. They came together and to the That's point great. where they have, they don't have block parties, they have neighbor to neighbor parties. They don't invite outside people. <laughs> they just party with each other. And they, the older people um, are the watch during the day for the people to go to work. And then when it snows, those younger people are out shoveling out the older people. Right. So one has, hand is watching the other. Well, and if we can emulate that, what they're doing all over Lindenhurst and bring people out to just right. work with each I other. I told the story last night, you know, how, to, how things have changed. Now you don't know who lives, lives next door to you. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, if there was a problem on the block, two seconds, there were 58 fathers out the door right. together See, as it, one. It That's is starting to happen to because people are Making the phone Like calls? I say, yes. every wave Texting. starts with a ripple, so you're the ripple. I, I think that you. what, you're, what you're both doing is very commendable. I mean, I, I, I really i am glad to have you come on the show, and I'd like to get you back a couple of more times during, throughout the course of the year. Thank you. Because I think that this is something that people have to get educated about. You know, this goes out... Um, having the ability to be on local cable from Montauk to Manhattan really helps out. I think that's uh, a great a, idea a, what you said because we could follow their progression yeah. and make, maybe, maybe make them a, uh, a yeah. model you know, for other communities, which would be wonderful. We want, we want that. We it's want more important. people to do this. Mm -hmm. It's very important, uh, the, the kind of work that you're doing. Oh, yeah. I know that you guys set up a video. Uh, that we have. Do you mind if we play a clip We'd from that video? That. And it's also, that's original music written for our coalition. And we're going to get into that when we come yeah. back from the video. Janine, let's play a little of that video. We'll be right back.
of dark hotel room Musty peeling pale Time to pull back those shells When I feel this way So many things to say Okay, we're back. Um, before we go, because we only have a couple of more minutes left, I, which is very important, people get the wrong idea about having these coalitions in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, good neighborhoods are created by good neighbors, right. and good neighbors watch out for neighbors. So, mm -hmm. if you have, a, if you're in a town somewhere here on Long Island, and um, and you have a um, you want to put together a coalition. Listen, it's not going to affect your town. It's going to bring your town and your neighbors closer together. It's <laughs> going to bring your families closer together. And you're going to reach out to other coalitions in other areas. And maybe, be just maybe, you'll be able to combat some of the drug abuse here on Long Island. And we do have uh, the Suffolk County Prevention Resource Center yes. is the agency that will help you and hold your hand from the beginning and throughout your journey to build a coalition, an effective uh, model coalition where you will be eligible to apply for grants mm -hmm. and bring the finances into your community that our community so need. And if you need to drop the word coalition, you can look at passionate individuals within your community banding together that want to make a change, that want to bring uh, health, so wellness, and uh, passion. You know, 
It's a We're out of time. It's a beautiful thing. Thanks so much for being on the show. This is another edition of the Long Island View. We'll be back next week with another exciting show here on Long Island. Tommy, say goodnight. I want to just send my blessings to these two angels. I Thank think you. what they do is just Thank you from much. heaven up there. So the world needs a lot more ladies like this and men. It's time to step up everybody and do the right thing and have a blessed week.